What are the different levels of certification and licensure for EMTs and paramedics? And what is the difference between certification and licensure? The answer on this episode of The Dr. Medic. In the United States, we have some very confusing terminology sometimes when referring to EMTs and paramedics. TV and movies and the news use most of the terms interchangeably, but in reality, there are vast differences between them. Some call us all EMTs, or we are all paramedics, or medics, or first responders, or even worse, ambulance drivers. There's an actual difference between all of those terms. But before we can look at all of the differences, let's first look at the difference between certification and licensure. By definition, certification means that some agency or organization has recognized that some individual has met the minimum standards in education or skills for that particular certification or profession. This means that someone sat through some form of education or training and then usually was tested on those skills in education and received some form of certificate. It even works for Jedis. Check out Mrs. Dr. Medic. Somehow she became a certified Jedi. <coughs> for the most part though, pre-hospital providers in the US are all certified through the National Registry of EMTs, otherwise known as the NREMT or simply the National Registry. The NREMT functions both to certify new pre-hospital providers, but also to maintain a process of certification throughout one's career by way of continuing education. There are four levels of certification through the NREMT. They are Emergency Medical Responder, or EMR, Emergency Medical Technician, or EMT, Advanced Emergency Medical Technician, or AEMT, and Paramedic. For the first three levels, EMR, EMT, and Advanced, one must first pass a state-approved course for that particular level. Once they have passed that course, they can then take a certification exam with the NREMT to get what we call their national certification. For paramedic, the course must also be approved at the state level, but the course and program itself must also be accredited through the Commission on Accreditation of Allied Health Education Programs, otherwise known as CAHEP. Once someone passes these courses and then passes their NREMT exams, they are now considered certified at that level. However, this does not mean that they can then go and work at that level. To work, they must first be licensed. By definition, to be licensed at one of these levels, one must be granted the authority by some governing body, almost always a state government, to practice at that level. Each state may have their own requirements for licensing, one of which is to have their NREMT certification. As of today, at the EMT level, 46 states will require the NREMT certification, as does most of the military, with four states having their own state certification process where the National Registry is optional. For paramedic, 47 of the states require the registry, with three states having their own state certification process where the registry is optional. License applications are done through each state and, if approved, they then issue a license to the person who can then go look for a job at their level. So what are the different levels? First, you do not have to work your way through all of the levels necessarily. Anyone can start their education at the EMR or EMT level. Anyone who wants to be certified as an AEMT or paramedic must first be certified as an EMT. Anyone who is an EMT can skip AEMT and go straight to paramedic. Clear as mud? Good. Emergency Medical Responder, or EMR, is a quick certification that is usually most applicable to volunteer firefighters and lots of law enforcement. The course is usually about 60 hours in length and can be completed over the span of just a few weeks or months. In short, EMR is a great certification for someone who wants to be trained in really good first aid with an entry-level knowledge about patient assessment and treatment. EMR courses are mostly offered at actual EMS and fire agencies, but there are some that may also be offered at technical centers and colleges. Most states would not actually license someone as an EMR, as they would typically have to be at least an EMT to be licensed. 
An EMR certificate technically does not give the holder any authority to treat a patient above and beyond what a member of the public can do, but rather provides them with knowledge of really good first aid. Emergency medical technician or EMT, which is the most popular place to start, is a certification that typically takes about 250 to 300 hours to complete and usually is completed over about 10 to 16 weeks. EMTs are taught what we call basic life support or BLS. This includes items such as patient assessment, CPR and AED, bleeding control, getting vital signs, splinting, and even some basic emergency medication administration. EMTs would have to be licensed to provide care as some of what they do would go above and beyond what the public would be allowed to do. EMT courses are mostly offered at technical centers and community colleges, but may also be offered at some EMS or fire agencies or even at some big universities. Advanced EMT or AEMTs is a certification that would have to occur after EMT. It would normally be an additional 250 to 400 hours. AEMTs are taught some advanced assessment techniques as well as some advanced skills such as obtaining IV access, advanced airway management, and can administer some advanced frontline medications in situations such as cardiac arrest. AEMTs would also have to be licensed to provide care and are found more often in some of the most rural parts of the U.S. AEMT, like EMT courses, are most offered at technical centers and community colleges, but also may be offered at some EMS or fire agencies. Paramedic is a certification that would also have to occur after gaining EMT certification and would normally be an additional 1,100 to 1,400 hours above and beyond EMT education. Paramedics are taught mainly advanced assessment techniques, advanced cardiology, including EKG, advanced pharmacology, as well as anatomy and physiology. EMTs, advanced EMTs, and paramedics are all educated on the same main topics of airway, trauma, medical, cardiac, and EMS operations. However, with each subsequent level of certification, the depth and the breadth of each subject is vastly increased. In the end, paramedics are expected to provide the highest level of pre-hospital care in the U.S., and they do so mainly by utilizing advanced critical thinking skills. It doesn't take two years after becoming an EMT to train someone on how to get an IV or intubate, but it does take at least that long to educate someone on how to decide when or when not to intubate somebody or get an IV. Paramedic education is mostly offered at big technical centers, community colleges, and several big universities. There are also several large fire departments and EMS agencies that also offer their own paramedic education. Regardless of the format, all paramedic programs in the United States must be accredited in order to allow their students to test for their national registry certification. Man, that's an awful lot of information in a short amount of time. Yes, there are some instances where what I just told you is a bit different, such as how Texas delineates between certified and licensed and how long or short some of the programs might be, but this is just a general description of how the certification levels work. I hope you all learned something today, and if you did, I hope that I earned your like and your subscription. Either way, cheers to all of you, and I do hope that you all have a beautiful day.